Hello everyone! This video is entitled, Balancing Chemical Reactions. In this lecture, I will explain how to balance chemical reactions using a method with four simple rules. This process allows users to balance reactions quickly and with minimal effort. Okay, let's get started. Several different methods for balancing chemical equations have been created over the years. I personally have found none of these methods useful. So I have created my own set of balancing rules. There are four rules in total. The first, if the same polyatomic is on both sides of the reaction arrow, balance the polyatomic first as one unit. The same rule applies if you have more than one kind of polyatomic in the reaction. Rule number two, Balance the element whose quantity has been changed in step one. Then go back to the beginning of the reaction. Rule number three. If you encounter an odd number of atoms for the element you are trying to balance, and it is difficult to convert to an even number, skip that element. Balance it last. And rule number four. If you have to balance an odd number of atoms for an element, with a fraction, multiply the whole reaction by two to get rid of the fraction. Now, some of these rules may seem a little cryptic until you start doing some practice questions. So let's jump into some questions together to see how these rules can be applied. For my first example, I have a reaction with two different types of polyatomic ions. I have a carbonate ion here, I have a phosphate ion here, and I have another phosphate ion here in my product. Now you can see that I have phosphates on both sides of my reaction arrow. And so let's refer to rule number one. Rule number one states that if the same polyatomic ion is on both sides of the reaction arrow, you balance the polyatomic ion first as a single unit. The same rule applies if you do have more than one kind of polyatomic ion in the reaction. However, that's only the case if the other polyatomic ion is on both sides of the reaction arrow. And so if you take a look at carbonate, carbonate is only on one side of the reaction arrow. It does not exist in the product side. Now, although carbon dioxide looks like carbonate, it is not carbonate. Because of that, I cannot treat it as a single unit. Looking at my phosphate ions, I have one phosphate ion in my reactant side and I have one phosphate ion in my product side. And so in fact, the phosphate ions are already balanced. And so there's nothing left for me to do than to move on to rule number two. Now rule number two states, balance the elements whose quantity has been changed in step one. And so in fact, because I didn't change anything with my phosphate ions or any of the other elements, I can then move to the beginning of my reaction. At the beginning of my reaction, I have one potassium on the reactant side, and I have two potassium on my product side. And so the fastest way to balance that is to add a two in front of my potassium. Now by adding that two, I've essentially changed the amount of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. But we're gonna do this step by step, and so the first thing I'm gonna focus on is the hydrogen. And so now I have two hydrogen plus three hydrogen. Of course, you have to keep in mind, you're taking the total amount of hydrogen on the reactant side and comparing it to the total amount on the product side. And so I have five hydrogen on the reactant side and I only have one plus two, three hydrogen on the product side. And so the fastest way to convert these three hydrogen into five hydrogen is to add a two in front of this hydrogen. By doing this, I now have four plus one give me five hydrogen. Now, by changing the amount of hydrogen, I've now changed the amount of oxygen. And so you're doing it stepwise. You don't go back to the beginning. You basically work through the reaction the way the balancing takes you. And so here I've changed the amount of oxygen. So I have two oxygen plus another two oxygen, that's four oxygen. 
Now, I know you're looking at the oxygen and phosphate, but again, remember, we balance the phosphate ion as a single unit, and so we don't look at these oxygen anymore. This is considered balanced. And so now we're looking at the oxygen here. We have four oxygen, and on this side, we have six oxygen. And so the quickest way to make four into six is to add a two in front of the carbon here, and now we have four oxygen, plus two oxygen gives us six oxygen. And that balances out with the six oxygen on the reactant side. And in fact, by doing that, we also balance the carbon inadvertently. So now we have two carbon here and we have two carbon here. Now, if we did a quick look, two potassium, two potassium, we have two plus three, that's five hydrogen, and we have five hydrogen. We have two carbon here and we have two carbon here. And of course, we have six oxygen and six oxygen. And the phosphate has remained unchanged one and one. And so we have a balanced chemical equation. On to our second example. Now our second example again shows two different types of polyatomic ions. We have the ammonium ion here and we have the phosphate ion on both sides. Now, because the ammonium ion is only on one side of the reaction arrow, we cannot treat it as a single unit, but we can treat the two phosphate ions as a single unit based off of rule number one. Looking at the phosphate ions, I know that I only have one phosphate ion on both sides, and so, again, phosphate self-balances. So it brings us to rule number two. Rule number two, states that we should start at the beginning. And so I have three nitrogen on this side of the reaction arrow. And remember the three comes into the bracket. And so the easiest way to balance the nitrogen on this side is to add a three. By doing that, I've changed the hydrogen. And so you can see here that three times three is nine. 9 plus 2, that's 11. So I have 11 hydrogen on this side. Taking a look at this side, I have 4 times 3, that's 12, plus 1, that's 13 hydrogen. And so I've arrived to an issue here. I have an odd number, and I have another odd number, and I'm trying to balance them. And that can prove very difficult. That brings us to rule number 3. If you encounter an odd number of atoms, for an element that you are trying to balance, and it is difficult to convert to an even number, skip that element, balance it last. So we're gonna skip hydrogen and we're gonna move on. If we take stock of what we've done so far, we've balanced the nitrogen, we've skipped the hydrogen, the phosphate has been balanced, and so that brings us to sodium. I have one sodium on this side of the reaction, and here I have three sodium. And so I add a three to this sodium. And now I've changed the number of oxygen. So I have three oxygen on this side. Remember, I'm ignoring the four oxygen in the phosphate because I'm treating phosphate as a single unit. And that's the beauty of treating these uh, polyatomic ions as single units. I can just ignore them. And so I have three oxygen here. How many oxygen do I have here? Well, I have one oxygen right there. Again, I'm ignoring this phosphate. Best way to balance that is to add a three, and so now I have three oxygen. But again, by doing that, I've changed the amount of hydrogen. But that's okay because we skipped hydrogen. So now let's try to balance hydrogen. It's the last element we have to balance. Three times three, that's nine. And three times two, that's six. Nine plus six is 15, and so now I have 15 on this side. Here, I have four times three, Okay, that's 12, plus three, that's 15. And so now I've inadvertently balanced the hydrogen just by leaving it to the last step. That's why it's so important to follow these rules step by step. If I tried to balance the hydrogen in the middle of my process, it would prove very difficult to do and it would be very time consuming. And so by leaving it to the end, I've actually inadvertently balanced it. So that brings us to our next question. Again, our next question has quite a few polyatomic ions just at first glance. We have two different types of polyatomic ions. We have a nitrate on both sides of the reaction arrow, and we have a carbonate on both sides 
of the reaction arrow. So again, rule number one states that if you have them on both sides of the reaction arrow, you can balance them as a single unit. The same rule applies again if you have more than one type of polyatomic ion. I know that I have one carbonate on both sides of the reaction arrow, but in the case of nitrate, I have two on the reactant side and I only have one on the product side. And so the quickest way to balance that is to add a two in front of that compound and now I have two nitrate. But again, I've changed the number of sodium. Rule number two states that if I've changed the number of elements in step one, I need to balance that element. And so because I have two sodium here and I have two sodium here, I'm actually balanced. And so let's take stock of this reaction now. So I have one calcium and I have one calcium. I have two nitrate. I have two nitrate. I have two sodium two sodium, one carbonate, and one carbonate. And so just by treating my polyatomic ions as single units, I've actually completed the balancing of this reaction. And so it brings us to our next reaction. You can see how by following these steps, you end up going very quickly through the balancing of, of quite complicated reactions. With our next example, we again have polyatomic ions. The polyatomic ions that we have on both sides is sulfate. So we have sulfate in the reactant side, we have sulfate in the product side. We have a hydroxide on one side and we have a hydroxide on the other. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to balance my sulfate. I have three here and I have three here. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You could immediately place a three in front of this sodium here to balance out the hydroxide, which would be perfectly okay. And if you did that, it would take you down um, a very similar road that I'm about to go down. Or because I balance the sulfate, I can just then balance the sodium that I've changed. And so because I have six sodium now, and I only have one sodium here, I can just place a six right in front of sodium. And so now my sodium are balanced. I've changed the amount of hydroxide. And so I have six hydroxide and I only have three hydroxide here. And so the best way to balance that is to multiply by two. And so now I have six hydroxide. And by doing that, I've balanced my chromium and I've balanced my chromium, okay? And so there's two ways of doing that. If I did it the other way and I placed a three here, then you would see that I would have three sodium and I would have six sodium and so I'd have to change that three to a six and then I would add the two. And so it just adds an extra step, um, but either way you would get the right answer. Okay, and so for our next example, I have a nitrate ion on one side and I have a nitrate ion on the other. Now, I will tell you just at quick glance, this is going to be a little bit more complicated and you'll see why in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to balance my, my two polyatomics as a single unit following rule number one. And so I'm going to add a two in front of this compound. And by doing that, I now have two nitrate and two nitrate. What I've changed is the number of hydrogen. So now I have two hydrogen on the reactant side and I have two hydrogen on my product side, which is balanced. I can skip the nitrate, it's already balanced. I go to my copper, I have one copper and one copper. And so now I'm left with this nitrogen dioxide. Now, the difficulty here is that I already balanced my nitrate and by balancing my nitrate, I've balanced my nitrogen. But have I really? No, I haven't because of this nitrogen in the nitrogen dioxide. And so I actually have to forego rule number one and this is one of the very rare exceptions because I have a nitrogen that stands alone here. And so I actually have three nitrogen on this side and I have two nitrogen on this side. Now, by balancing my nitrates as a single unit, I still can keep this two. It's a great starting point uh, for balancing out this reaction. And so how do I make three balance out with two. Well, the fastest way to change this odd number to an even number is to add a two in front of it. So now, instead of having three, I have four nitrogen. And so two nitrogen here and two nitrogen in my nitrate, 
and I have two nitrogen in this compound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this two to a four, and now I have four nitrogen. By doing that, I've changed the number of hydrogen. And so I'm going to place a two in front of this hydrogen here, and now I have four hydrogen. And so let's take stock of what we've done. I have four hydrogen, I have four hydrogen, four nitrogen, two and two makes four nitrogen. I have 12 oxygen, and here I'll have uh, six plus four plus two gives me 12. And I have one copper and one copper. And so that reaction is balanced, which brings us to our next one. Now, this next one does not have a polyatomic ion. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to start directly from the beginning. We have four carbon and we have one carbon. And so I'm going to place a four in front of that carbon. By doing that, I've changed the number of oxygen. And so I have um, eight oxygen plus one, that's nine oxygen. Okay. Now I have nine oxygen and I have two here. I'm going to skip that. Uh, and the reason why is because of rule number three. And so just to remind you, Rule number three states that if you encounter an odd number of atoms for an element that you are trying to balance, and it is difficult to convert to an even number, you skip that element and balance it last. And so because I have nine oxygen on this side and I have two on this side, I'm just going to skip the oxygen. So I'm going to go directly back to the beginning. So I finished my carbon. Now I have 10 hydrogen and I have two hydrogen here. I'm going to add a five in front of it to make it 10. And so by doing that, I've actually changed the oxygen again, which is a good thing because I left it to the end. So let's see if it's self-resolved. So I have eight plus five, and that gives me 13. Now 13 and two, that did not resolve my problem. So the quickest way to balance this is to think, what can I multiply by two to give me 13? And so 6.5 multiplied by two will give me 13. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how is it possible to have a fraction as a coefficient? And you cannot. And so that brings us to rule number four. If you have to balance an odd number of atoms for an element with a fraction, you multiply the whole reaction by two to get rid of the fraction. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply the whole reaction by two. And by doing this, I get rid of my fraction, and now I've balanced my chemical equation. That brings us to our last example, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, could you go over that again? Not to worry, this example has something very similar happening in it. Here you can see uh, I have one iron, one iron, two sulfur, two sulfur. I have two chlorine here. But on this side, you can see that I have three plus two, that's five. And so I'm stuck now. I can't leave chlorine to the end because it is the end. I need to balance this odd number with an even number. And so I have five chlorine and I have two chlorine. What can I multiply by two to give me five? Well, the fraction or the decimal I can use is 2.5. But again, rule number four states that if I have a fraction, I have to multiply the whole reaction by two. So if I multiply this reaction by two, I change my coefficients, and now I've gotten rid of that fraction. And now my reaction is balanced. And that concludes the examples for balancing chemical equations. And with the conclusion of this slide, I have concluded this lecture and this package. I hope you understood everything I discussed today. Thank you for listening.